This is part 81 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to read and analyze deadlock information captured in the error log so we can better understand what's causing these deadlocks and take appropriate actions to prevent or minimize the occurrence of these deadlocks. This is continuation to part 80, so please watch part 80 before proceeding. In the previous video session, we discussed that we can use this system stored procedure to read the error log. So this error log should contain the information about the deadlock because in the previous video session we discussed how to enable deadlock logging. So the deadlock log starts right here. So let's copy all these rows and paste them in a notepad so we can understand what's causing this deadlock. The first thing that we have to understand here is that the deadlock information in the log has three sections. Deadlock victim section, process list and resource list. The deadlock victim section contains the ID of the process that was selected as the deadlock victim and killed by SQL Server. So if you look at the log information right here, notice that the first section that we have here is the deadlock victim section. And if you look at the value it contains, it is the ID of the process that is made the deadlock victim. So what I'm going to do is take that ID and look up that in the process list section that we have here. So the next section in the log information is the process list section, which contains the list of the processes that participated in the deadlock. So if you look at this process list section, notice the first process starts right here and it ends right there. And the second process starts right here. Now, when we take this process ID and compare that with these processes that we have here, it matches with the first process ID. That means this is the process that's made the deadlock victim. So whatever transaction this process is executing, that transaction is ruled back. So the transaction uh, I mean stored procedure SP transaction 2 that is made as the deadlock victim. And if you look at this process node element it has got a lot of useful information that we can use to troubleshoot deadlock. So for example we have this login name here which basically tells us the login name um, that this process was executed using. And if you look at the login name of the second process, notice that it's using the same login name. That means both the processes are executed by the same user. And we can also see the isolation level the process was using. Notice it is using read committed. If you recollect from the previous video session, we have not explicitly set any transaction isolation level when we were executing these procedures. Right? So that's why SQL Server was using the default read committed isolation level. In addition to login name and isolation level, we also have the fully qualified stored procedure name, you know, which was executing when the deadlock occurred. So if you look at this proc name here, notice that we have the fully qualified name of the stored procedure, sample db.dbo.sp transaction2. And we also have input buffer, so basically that contains the actual code that was executing. So in order to execute you know, that stored procedure, this is the code that we used, execute SP transaction 2. So that's the code that was executing when the deadlock occurred. Now, the next section in the list that we have here is the resource list section that starts right here and this is very important. So what does this resource list section contain? It contains the list of the resources that is the database objects owned by the processes involved in the deadlock. So if you look at the resource list, this is the first resource that we have. An important thing to note here is the object name. So we have this resource table A and that resource has got an owner and a waiting process. So the owner process and the waiting process. Owner process is the one which has acquired lock on it. So owner process is this process with that ID. So if I take and look up that ID in the process list, that is our second process which successfully executed. Okay. So if you look at this process, it's actually executing uh, SP transaction one stored procedure and if you look at SP transaction one stored procedure notice it is first updating table A that means 
it has already acquired an exclusive lock on that table. We know that, right? So the owner for this resource, that is table A, is this process. And notice the mode node here. So it says X. That means it has acquired an exclusive lock on that resource. And then the next thing that we have is the waiter list, which contains the ID of the process that is waiting to acquire a lock on that resource. In this case, this is the waiting process ID. And if you look at this process ID in the process list that we have, it is the first process which is made the deadlock victim, right? And if you look at this process, it was actually executing this transaction, SP transaction two. And if you look at SP transaction two, it has acquired an exclusive lock on table B, but it is waiting to acquire an exclusive lock on table A because the other transaction has actually acquired an exclusive lock already on that. So from this information, it is clear, you know, which process is owning the resource, what type of lock it has acquired, and which process is waiting for that resource, and what type of lock it is requesting for. So here it's requesting for an exclusive lock and that cannot happen until you know this transaction completes. Right? So that's the first resource. And we also have another resource, table B. And if you look at table B, the owner for that resource is this process, the process that's made the deadlock victim. And obviously this process is executing which transaction? Second transaction. So second transaction is updating table B first. So that means it already has an exclusive lock on that resource. So the mode says an exclusive lock. And the waiting process ID is this one. That is the second process which completed successfully. So this is waiting for an exclusive lock on table B resource. Okay, so by looking at this resource list, it's clear for us these are the resources that are involved in the deadlock and these are the transactions that are being executed when the deadlock occurred. So when we look at those transactions side by side, then you know we can understand the problem. So this is trying to update table A first and then table B and this one is trying to update table B first and then table A. So when these transactions are being executed simultaneously, they are locking the resources in such a way that no one can move forward. So how can we solve this problem? Pretty straightforward. We need to ensure that the database objects, that is in our case, table A and table B, are always accessed in the same order, right? So let's go ahead and change the order. So I'm going to flip this. So now, in both the cases, the tables are being accessed in the same order. So let's go ahead and alter this procedure. And now, let's execute both the transactions simultaneously and see if a deadlock can occur. So obviously, it's going to take at least seconds, um, 10 seconds, because we have um, deliberately made the transaction sleep for five seconds each. Notice now both the transactions completed successfully. Thank you for listening and have a great day.